cool. There's the card. What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto USA and today I just want to hang out with you guys for a little bit, you know, shoot the breeze, maybe talk a little bit about uh, the Profoto Connect, this little thing that everybody seems to be uh, all up in a tussy about. You love it or you hate it, um, but we're going we're gonna to dive through it. I've got my phone hooked up too, so we're going to, I'm going to uh, go through the app with you. Some of the things that we've added, some things that I think you, uh, that you're going to think are actually really, really cool. Uh, about the Connect and some things that we're going to be able to expand on in the future with this little bad boy. So right off the jump, uh, it's a button-free trigger. It's literally supposed to be something that takes the process of the air remote and simplifies it because there is a there's a large demographic of photographer out there who just get overwhelmed when they see all the extra things that are on the screens, all the extra buttons. They don't really care about that stuff right away. They just want to be able to put something on top of their camera and it work. Just like that. Set your light up on channel one and go. And, and the majority of people who are running around are running around with one light. So this makes a ton of sense. The fact that you can just pop this on top of your camera, just like that, boom, right into auto mode, and you're ready to rock and roll. If you wanted to shoot TTL mode, if you wanted to lock that down into place, you twist it one more time into manual mode, and you're ready to rock and roll. So it's, it's a great little trigger. It's something that I, I've had for, you know, a month or so now and I always kind of just keep in my bag especially when I'm running around with my Fuji in one light it just it's really really simple so I'm gonna see if you guys have any questions really fast before we start diving in too deep uh let's, what's up everybody yo 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 yeah there was no audio for a second we we cut to the screen a little too soon uh what's up from Motor City baby what's happening let's see let's see hello hello do it do it we love it <laughs> cool so like I said, it's really not a, a, a super heavy device when it comes down to what it comes down to. It simply slides right onto the, the hot shoe of your camera and you twist it off, auto or on. You have some status, you have a status indicator light up here at the top to kind of let you know what's going on. So when you first fire it up, uh, you're going to see it. Sorry, I had to turn it off to do this again. So when you first fire it up, a green light's going to a green light's going to come on and that's just simply going to say hey i'm firing up and when the the white light shows up on this thing it's saying hey i'm ready to rock and roll so when you're shooting it also gives you battery life indication so as the battery starts to get lower you'll see it turn from white to yellow so that's going to give you the indication that hey start paying attention to your battery because it's obviously we're we're starting to get to the lower levels and then you'll actually get a red light whenever you're starting to get critically low and it's telling you to hey charge this thing up the cool thing about it is it's got a built-in lithium-ion battery inside of it so it's it's totally rechargeable all you do is plug in a USB-C cable right here to the side of it and it charges it up and what's really really neat is um 
something you could just keep like one of those really tiny um, rechargeable battery uh, things that people use for their phones all the time in your pocket and you can actually plug it into this thing and charge it at the same time if you find that you're starting to get really, really low on juice. So you can shoot and charge this at the exact same time, which is really, really cool. So, but just off, off the bat by itself at, on a full charge, you're going to get 30 hours of battery life. I've tried, um, over the last few months, I've tried killing mine just so I could get to the point where, uh, you know, I was critically low and I've had a, I don't think I've ever gotten, I think I've had the connect now for two months and I don't think I've ever gotten all the way to dead on it. So it, it just may, maybe I'm, I'm just not doing something wrong, but I've never killed one. So the battery life is, is quite phenomenal. Uh, so you have that there. When you release it, there's simply just a release button on the back and lets you slide it off. So you, so installing it and uninstalling it's really, really simple. And I mean, really when it comes down to it, that's what it's all about. So when you're in TTL mode, you'll have the ability to use your flash exposure compensation inside your camera. So if you're, if you're using automatic and you're noticing that you're not getting exactly the exposure that you want, you have the ability to use your camera's flash exposure compensation to either boost it by however much you need or drop the power by however much you need. So you do have power control from right there. Now, whenever you flip over to manual mode, that's where it changes up a little bit. So the, the two ways that you're going to be able to control your power um, from the connect is either going to be just to simply go over to your flash and power it up or down. Um, I'm going to power up this B1 because I'm going to show you guys it controlling it here in just a second. So, but uh, you simply, you walk over your flash, you can power it up and down, or um, you can you can pop open the Pro Photo app and you can swipe left or right, and that will give you the ability to, to, to jump the power up and down or manually control the power from your uh, your phone. The cool thing is, too, is it's a, it's a full-fledged air remote. So it's taking the Bluetooth uh, connection that you are giving it uh, and it's it's converting that into air and it's going to control anything with air. So even this thing will even shoot and fire D1s. I think another big thing that we need to talk about too, because I, I there was a little bit of confusion, confusion when we launched it. This thing's not out there to replace the air remote. The air remote is here. This is just an, a supplementary piece for someone who wants simplicity in firing their flashes, which there's quite a few. And, and, and all, for all the people who've called telling me that this is exactly the product they've been waiting for, I'm super excited that we, we made something for you. So, and, so using it is something that you can do with all of your stuff. So from your B1s to your, your D1s, uh, D2s, Pro 10s, all the way up from, from the baseline A1 all the way up to the Pro 10, you can use this thing and it works phenomenally. So. So as far as it goes, using it just externally, that's pretty simple. Automatic on or, or automatic manual or off to switch it on. You have your, your indicator light on the top of it to tell you how much juice you have or whether or not you're connected to Bluetooth. It will, uh, whenever it's trying to connect to the Bluetooth of your phone, you'll see a blue light come on and that'll let you know that, hey, we're connected. Uh, if you see the blue light flashing, it just tells you that, hey, we disconnected Bluetooth from the, the application. So, like I said, real simple, off auto manual, flash exposure compensation to control the power in TTL mode, or manually control your, um, or manually dial your flash up and down uh, in manual mode, or use the app to go up and down. So really, really cool stuff. Before we jump over into the app, I'm gonna see if you guys have any questions. Let's see, is there two-way communication that is, can the phone app show flash status, battery status, flash power? So. It can't, and that's because the air system, and, and this is when a lot of people were always saying, can why can't I just see the power level on the screen of my air remote? It's because the air remote or the, the air system doesn't send information back. So it's it's literally a one-way street. It's it's direct communication from your air remote to the flash. So it can't send back through those signals, you know battery uh, current power status uh battery status and all that stuff that's why on the b10 we also implemented bluetooth inside of it that way you could get a full um a full gamut of the information that you would want from it including what your current power setting is uh what your current battery setting is and, and then to dive into it and change any of the other settings inside of it so Unfortunately, it's a limitation of air, and in case you didn't know, we made air back in 2008. The very first air remote never had a screen, so it wasn't something that we had to think about at that time because you just you had buttons that powered up, powered down, turned things on, turned things off, but there was no screen. So 
when it was, like I said, originally designed, it was designed as a one-way street. So the, the Bluetooth setup is kind of what is our solution to giving everyone all the information that they're asking for uh, with their, their flash units or the connector, anything like that. Let me see. Um, cool. Yes, I am going to show you um, how the Bluetooth works. And, and let's see shoot with an older Canon EOS 5D Mark III that has no Wi-Fi, so this give you more connectivity to iPhones, iPads. So this isn't going to give you connectivity to your Canon via uh, via Bluetooth or our system. It's just going to give you connectivity to the Air Remote uh, via the Bluetooth system. And it, and it works fine with your 5D Mark III, totally compatible. You would just slide it right on the top of it. And uh, so in, it, in our current state, we're still only an iOS uh application currently the the tough thing about android and, it, and we are working on android just the tough thing with android is there it's not as streamlined as ios is there's a lot of different versions and so to ensure compatibility with those we just have to work through all the kinks and all of them so android's coming so so don't worry about it let's see power banks yeah that's the word I was looking for, a power bank. So if you wanted to shoot and charge this thing at the same time, you could plug a power bank into the side of it with USB-C cable and you're ready to rock and roll. Thank you so much, Ty. Um, so no ability to change power from camera, uh, phone out of pocket, balance camera, fiddle with your phone. Um, so in manual mode, correct. There's no way to change the power in manual mode in, without obviously using your phone or going over to the flash. In TTL mode, you still have the ability to um, flash exposure compensate the shot and when you flash exposure compensate the shot that will uh read from the camera to the remote and out to your flash and then you can actually still do the hybrid trick so you can actually still go from automatic to manual mode and lock that power setting into place but like i said this unit is designed for simplicity it's not meant to have all the extra things that the air remote has uh, the air remote ttl has for example because when we were asking all the people that we built this thing for they said we don't want all that extra stuff and so we built that product for them and the, and the more people that we can reach as far as a company goes the more that we can continue to to grow and make more products and more products that that you know hit this this gamut of photographer or that gamut of photographer so which is all this is to do is to make sure that we're reaching as many photographers as we can to help them get great light and continue to grow and make great products for everyone else as well. Let's see. So in manual mode, can't use the exposure compensation. Yeah, and that's just because when you flip over to manual mode, you're actually taking, you're relinquishing control from the camera and, and you're making the decisions yourself. So there's no, there's nothing inside the cameras from there on that's gonna, that's gonna communicate any information out. Let's see. Uh, how is this $300 flash? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't shoot Flashpoint, so I can't tell you uh, what it is. I can just tell you that it's a simplified trigger that works incredibly well with our air system. And we're gonna. I'm gonna show you some cool stuff in the Bluetooth settings here in a second. Um, oh yeah, the the cool. The guys at the service department got you taken care of. Awesome. Yeah, they're really really good dudes there. Let's see. Is there an A1 for Sony available? A1 for Sony is absolutely coming. Uh, when we when we launch it, you'll be super happy about it too. Hi from Washington D.C. How much is the Connect? Connect is 299 bucks USD. So enough about me gabbing about all that stuff. We're gonna jump into the application now. So let me launch my ProPhoto app. Let me turn one of these bad boys on. Let's go here. So you see it fire up. It's gonna connect real quick. No pun intended. So cool, we're loaded up. So inside the application, because I'm in manual mode, you're gonna notice that up here, it's gonna show you the current channel that you're on your battery status indicator, what mode you're in, so automatic or TTL mode. It's also the name Profoto, but that's a custom name that we can change. So if you wanted, if I wanted it to be Chris's Connect, I could change it to Chris's Connect. So in TTL mode from here, like I said, you can either flash exposure compensate inside your camera, or you can flash exposure compensate right here from the app. So you have plus or minus three stops of control in your compensation, and that's right there on the, on the, money. So if I flip this into manual mode, you'll see the actual screen itself switch over to manual mode. And from there, we're just going to make power adjustments. And then whenever it, it sees the maximum uh, that it can turn up the flash any longer, it's going to read out maximum. Same thing as I start to turn it down and turn it down. And I, I will either hit minus 10 
or if it tries to turn down lower than that, it will say minimum just like it just did. See right there, minimum. So that's the information that you're gonna get right there from the sliding scale. Where things are gonna get cooler is how we're gonna be able to eventually expand the connect to do more things. And we're gonna punch into the menu so you can see it. So first and foremost, you have your, um, your device name. And like I said, I could rename this thing to Chris's Connect, Chris Connect, and then hit save and boom, that's the name of my device now. You change it whenever you want to. Then you can go in here to your air channels one through eight. The other really, really cool thing about the Connect is the fact that we're eventually gonna be able to expand our air channel some more, especially for really congested areas that uh, may or may not have, uh, or that may have a lot of people shooting on the same channel at the same time. So in its current form, you still have channels one through eight, like we've always had in the air system. So you can go in here and adjust those. I'm gonna stay on air channel one. Then the next thing that you have is X-Sync. So X-Sync is the exact same thing that you're used to seeing if you've used the A1 at all. So what X-Sync is gonna do is it's gonna deactivate the extra pins on the bottom of the connect, and it's only going to trigger, uh, it's only going to um, use the, the sync pin. So you can take you know, a Nikon, uh, a Nikon Connect, and you could, if you needed to, you could throw it on like a, a Mamiya 7.2 and have your flash working with your 7.2, no problem. So you have that ability, which is really, really cool. So, and all you simply do is you just click the X-Sync button to, to toggle it on or off. On the Canon units, and I actually need to, let me fire up a Canon unit because this is important. So I'm gonna turn off my Nikon one right there. Let me turn on the Canon one, cool. Sorry, just letting it connect for a second. There we go, device found. The reason that I wanted to switch over the Canon unit is because uh, in the Canon system, you have to, uh, oh, there's a firmware update available. So I'll show you guys that in a second here too. So the reason that I wanted to switch over to the Canon unit, and actually, is it in here? It is not in here. So I, it's, I need to do the firmware update. Um, hang on just a second, let me get my updated, my updated one. Sorry guys. I've got one other Canon unit that I did firmware update already, and that one has uh, first and second curtain sync inside of it, So, and that's what I wanna show you. So the Nikon unit uh, isn't, and I, I haven't tried the Sony unit yet, but it's not gonna show you first and second curtain sync because you control that stuff from inside of your camera. So the Canon one, on the other hand, is something that you're gonna control from the outside. So you're gonna ha actually have that feature here. So when I punch back into the app, up underneath X-Sync, you're gonna see your, uh, your first and second curtain sync mode. So you can go in here and you can select that because that's an external selection that you make on a Canon anyway. So your first and second curtain syncs are there, which is really, really cool. Then if you punch in here to the advanced menu, you're gonna have stuff like the serial number for the current connect that I have, the current firmware, and then you can actually punch into the firmware update option and it will tell you if your firmware's up to date or if you have a fresh one. Usually whenever there's a, a firmware update that's needed, you'll see a little install button uh, right up underneath the power scale, which you saw just a second ago when I fired up that other A1. And here's another really, really cool thing that we added that I don't think people were expecting. So something, when we originally designed the Air Remote system, we wanted to design it with this insanely long range. So that's why you got, you know, 300 meters or 1,000 feet of, of just solid sync range, of a reliable sync range. The problem with that is whenever you start working in really, really tight quarters, that sync range can be so powerful that you can throw the signal right past your flash. And, and people are starting to find that, especially with the B10, when they're you know working in really, really tight quarters next to the B10 and they're, they're firing and you're not getting reliable sync. And that's a big issue. So we when we originally designed the A, the Air Remote, we, we never even imagined that's how people were working. So, but when, b between the Air Remote and the A1, we added a switching uh, radio inside the A1, so then you were able to work closer or further away. So what we did inside the Connect is we actually added a variable radio. So you could actually increase the intensity or decrease the intensity depending on your working distance. So if you go in here, normally this thing is set at P4. It's, it's the recommended setting for what most people need it for. But if you're gonna start using a really, really long range, you know you're gonna set your lights you know, pretty far away, uh, around 1,000 feet. You can actually go in here and pump this up to P1, and that's gonna give the, the radio its maximum uh, radio distance and as far as output goes. Or vice versa, if you find yourself as one of the people who were working in really tight quarters with your B10, 
and you know you might be right next to it you could drop this thing down to p7 and that's going to be your minimum power and that way you're not going to have those sinking issues of the air remote just blowing the information right by you so that's something uh, th that I think is actually a really, really cool ad. I was not even expecting it whenever I did the firmware update to, to get to this. So it's a, it's a brilliant addition. And then eventually, too, we're going to be adding groups back into it uh, and doing some other really, really cool stuff with the app, too, which is really, really neat. So I think in, in, its, in its rawest form, the Connect is obviously no frills, no buttons, just you know two settings, and you're rocking and rolling. But whenever you start diving in deeper into it, you have a lot more custom control and things that we're going to be able to continuously add and make better inside the, the Connect, which I think is pretty dope. I, I'm a big fan of it. You know, when, like I said, when I'm running and gunning just by myself uh, with one flash, this thing's great, especially with my Fuji because it's, it's super compact. Now, whenever I'm going to do more complex things and I want to do some ratioing of lights off of one another, uh, or I'm going to be controlling complex things, I can do one of two things. I can use my air remote, or I can keep my connect with me, and I can keep uh, my old school air remote with my six groups in my pocket, just depending on how I want to work. And I think that's just up to you. It's how you want to work. Uh, one thing that's cool about it is if, if it doesn't always necessarily fit your your work style, it's a killer backup to have because it's so it's you know 120 bucks cheaper than the the air remote, the air TTL remote. So it's kind of cool just to have something like that in your bag if you needed it. I keep one with me now, which is which is really, really great. So it's, it's a fun little remote. So let me see if you guys have any more um, questions. Hey, from watching these. Oh yeah, I just said that. Do you know when Sony, uh, A1 for Sony's coming? Uh, as far as I know, it's on its way. I don't have, like I said, this, there's a Totem Pole at Pro Photo, and I'm this guy right down here at the bottom of it. So I don't always know that information. I do know that it's coming. Uh, I just, I wish I had a date. I, I really, really do, man. I, I, I feel your pain. Um, would I get one of those remotes? Ted, I keep one in my bag. Um, like I said, a lot of times whenever I'm out on the road, I only ever take like a B10 in my bag, my Fuji, and it's it's nice to have like something even more compact. I'm always worried about um, kind of busting up my air remote because I've, I've actually had my screen get shattered once before. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice having that with me. So would I use it? I would use it. And it's, it's because I understand the way that it works and can deal with, you know, pulling out my phone and changing the power if I need to, if, if my lights, you know, boomed up 10 feet in the air. Like that doesn't bother me as much as it bothers some people. So, and then I even saw a uh, Raf Nagal had this really rad setup where he had, you know, his phone clamped to his tether table and it was just right there all set up. I, I never even thought about doing that. And that's a dyno idea. You're not even pulling it out. It's just always there, which is kind of cool. So let's see, what's up, Boston in the house? My boy John David with the flam flam. Let's see. This is true. Was hand holding the B10 just above my head the other day and couldn't get it to fire too close. Yeah, so it's it, JDP. That's exactly what the the RF adjustment is so killer for. So you can you can really bring that power down. So so hopefully that's hopefully that's some cool information for you guys. Like I said, if 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 nothing else, you know what the Connect's all about. And that's and that's what this live was supposed to be for. So it's to explain that the air remote's not going anywhere. And for the people who are heavy duty power users, the air remote is still the choice. This is gonna be for somebody who's shooting one light, who wants so much simplicity. They wanna be able to take this thing out, pop it on top of their, their camera and just let it rip. That's what this was designed for. So, and if that person's you, that's awesome. Here's your, here's your product. If that's not you, cool. We're going to keep making other fun stuff for all kinds of shooters because there's so many different variations of people who take pictures. And that's what we're trying to do at Profoto. We will always have our roots based in fashion. That's where we cut our teeth. That's where we made all of our stuff. But as we're continuing, as we're trying to grow and offer products to everyone and make more robust and incredible products, we're going to grow that tent. And the Connect is just the next piece that helps us grow that tent. So hopefully you guys got some cool information from it. Like, if, like I said, if nothing else, you know what we're doing, you know what it's all about. You're now rest assured that we are not getting rid of the air remote and that this is not the replacement for it. Um, I hope that was able to answer some questions. I'm going to make sure that you guys don't have anything else for me before I roll out of here. It doesn't look like it. It looks like my boy Mike Hutchinson's in the house, though, up in Laguna Beach. I miss it out there, man. It was gorgeous. And uh, thanks for the restaurant recommendations. It was incredible. So in the meantime, I hope you guys, uh, I'm, I'm not seeing any other questions. So hopefully 
uh, that covered all the bases for you guys. If you have any other questions, drop something in the comments. I'll come back and read them. I'd love to answer anything that you want to anything that you want to talk about, or if you want to shoot an email out to me, or any of us at, at the U.S. Pro Photo Office or the Global Pro Photo Office, however you want to do it, we'd love to answer your questions. And in the meantime, have an awesome weekend. Um, do something cool. We'll see you next time. Later.